Hey you guys, back with Intimate Talk with Mama Boo. Tonight I will be vaguely going over our time is in dementia uh, from the notes, a few notes that I, I've taken and a little bit of elaboration just based on my experience with elders with our time is in dementia for over 15 years. So first off, what I would like to do is give a shout out to Bag Runner Apparel, which is in Mississippi. Thank you, C, for sending me a shirt to represent you guys on my social media. I appreciate the shipping all the way from Mississippi. And you guys, please go and check him out. He's a young African-American entrepreneur that's basically trying to get his brand started. So please go check him out at Bag Runner Apparel on IG. Once again, good looking out, C. For bag runner apparel. That's the stuff. So now let me get into a little bit of notes that I've written down. Um, just to explain a little bit for this first video. I'm not gonna go deep into depth because a lot of people do not really understand all times in dementia, so I would prefer to build up the information. <clears throat> so pertaining to Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is a slow fatal disease of the brain affecting one in every 10th person over the ages of 65. That is not necessarily true, uh, which is caused by two abnormal protein fragments, cells called plaque and tangles, which accumulates in the brain and kills brain cells. It starts in the hippocampus, which is the part of the brain where memories are first formed. Plaque and tangles destroy the hippocampus, which makes it harder and harder for new memories, such as from day to day, hour to hour. As more plaque and tangles spread to different regions of the brain, killing the brain cells and compromising functions, is called the diagnosed Alzheimer's. Basically, right? So now let's get to dementia. Dementia is a word given a set of symptoms affecting different aspects of thinking and brain functions as a result of physical diseases and uh, damaged brains. Um, Alzheimer's is the most common cause of dementia which affects the hippocampus memory and navigation. Lewy bodies affects changes in attention, sleep, um, also causes hallucinations and Parkinson-like symptoms. Vascular dementia mostly occurs after a stroke or blood vessels within the brains that has poor health, which affects thinking, planning, and attention. So to elaborate a little bit on my experience, as far as the age 65 plus, no, that's not completely accurate. It may be more so people of the age of 65 plus. However, I know for a fact one time I was working in assistant living and we had a woman there. The time I got there, she was about 56 and she was like in the far stages of her um, Alzheimer's. So I cannot even give like a calculator how long has she been suffering from the disease or the illness, but she was 56 at the time that I got there. Also, <coughs> Another term for Alzheimer's or dementia that we would use in our community or the urban community, which will be senile. That's basically the same thing. So if you have a family member or you know someone and you've heard people be like, oh, she's just senile. That's maybe Alzheimer's or dementia. More than likely it is what it is. Okay, so also certain tools that you guys can use because one of the things that I've learned over the years is communication is it, it varies depending on the level of the sickness. Well, the you know the years of being sick and basically the sickness, the illness in itself. You have to communicate to learn to communicate through other ways opposed to verbally giving commands or verbally asking questions. So taste, touch, smell, and hearing are certain things that I've learned over the years that may offset agitation by using one or maybe two or maybe all of those. And one thing about it, do not take my words and Mr. Screw anything that I'm saying because your family member or your loved one may not respond to taste, but may respond to hearing, may not respond to smell, but may respond to touch. So you have to figure out what it is that your loved one or the one that you're taking care of is actually responsive to, responding to. So for example, 
Um, say for example, one of the most agitated times that they go through is during bath time or bedtime. One thing about it that I've noticed, you guys try turning on some music of their era. Um, the 60s, the 50s, or whatever the case may be. Rather, it's an old record player in the house somewhere. See if you can plug that up and see if that will work and play that record or the records that they have from years ago. And that more than likely, that's the biggest thing right there. That more than likely will offset the agitation and have them thinking as far as in that time and place of what was taken, what was going on at that moment of what the music bring back. I mean... For example, just to give you guys something to think about, certain smells. Now, say, for example, if you're walking in Macy's and it's a smell, somebody just sprayed some perfume, it may make you think of a time in your life. Maybe you was a kid, maybe you was at church and one of the ladies always used to wear that. Or maybe it was a perfume that you haven't smelled in years that your mom or your dad used to, used to wear. So, like I say, you have to use the senses more so than verbally speaking to them. Another thing, my biggest thing, and please run with this. Please stop asking so many questions to one that's suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia. I know that is very hard, and I know that majority of the family members and the caretakers are not being malicious or anything like that when you guys do it, but please eliminate all the questions as much as possible. If you think about it, if, say for example, someone is asking you a question, and you do not know the answer, but you're in your right mind, supposedly, <laughs> depending on who you are. <laughs> but someone continuously asks you the same question over and over, and you do not even know the answer to the question, you will become agitated. So no difference with them. You have to think of them as the same way. Instead of saying, Mom, who is this? Mom, do you remember? Mom, uh, who is that? Instead of saying this, actually tell them the answer. You know, for example, if you visit your mom and last time you visit her, she didn't remember <clears throat> her granddaughter's name or didn't remember her granddaughter said that was someone else. This time, do not go in the room to ask grandma, who is this? You know, don't, that right there starts agitation. So that's the biggest thing. That's the hugest thing that really gets on my nerves. It's a pet peeve that when someone is suffering from one of these illnesses, a lot of people want to jog their memory and ask a bunch of questions and hope that if I ask so many questions, then it'll click. That's not what's going to happen. Okay? That's not what's going to Get that out of your mind. That is not what's going to happen. What you're going to do is create agitation because they cannot think of what it is that you're talking about or they cannot convey to you what it is um, they're trying to respond to you and say. So stop asking questions. Also, pertaining to smell. Uh, if you have an elder that's getting agitated or on a daily basis, um, may have bad days. What you can do is figure out what is, well, this is your relative, you should already know, um, cook something that they've smelled for years, something that just gives the house a whole aroma of whatever it is that you're cooking, for example. If you cook something that, say for example, greens, I don't know what it is that your loved ones may like, tamales, um, whatever it is, they will what they what I've seen them do is go back to that time and moment of that smell. No difference than like the example I gave you about walking into the mall and you smell that perfume. It'll send you back to another time. So with that, with your your loved one, what you can do is cook something, and that smell may send them to a time when they was getting their hair combed when they was ten years old or whatever the case, and they will have a conversation if they're still able to verbally converse with you. They will have a conversation with you as if it's that time and that moment or they will have it as in a reflection of their memories but it would take a lot of pressure off of what else is going on right then and there just based off of the smell um another thing touch um that's at the bottom of my list because touch really don't go that far that i've noticed um but it might for your loved ones i mean just the rub of the arm you know um rub of the leg another thing that i've that I do know from a client that I've had before is brushing their hair, combing their hair. Um, I wouldn't say wash, because wash may go into a whole nother agitational state, but to brush their hair, just the strokes of the hair, that's stimulation. 
you know so maybe your grandma you may just want to just brush her hair put some pigtails in it um give her some gangsters um i don't whatever it is that you guys do a hundred strokes of the brush whatever the case may be but that may subside some of that agitation as well and give their mind a more peaceful moment while you're brushing their hair so it's a lot of things that you have to think about pertain to that i know a lot of family members get real frustrated with oh my mom don't know who i am anymore or my dad don't even know who i am anymore uh you guys have to kind of step outside of that box and do what it is that you need to do to make their days better because one thing about it they have moments where they remember moments when they don't and you don't know when it's going to come or go so what you can't do is get your hopes up high and then you be disappointed at the end because mom don't remember who you are or grandma don't remember who you are it is a disease that's what it is is. So instead of asking her, who am I? Do you remember me? Just go in there and have a conversation with your loved one. Tell them who you are. Tell them certain memories that you remember. You know, it is better to talk to them opposed to try to get them to talk to you. Believe that. And once again, stop asking so many questions, please. For example, if Grandma is finna go brush her teeth while you the caretaker and she's finna you're taking your client in there to brush their teeth off of muscle memory They may already go in there and grab the toothbrush grab the toothpaste and you know start brushing their teeth Please do not walk them in there ask them. Where's your toothbrush? Where's your toothpaste? Please don't question the least questions the better talk to them um, Another thing as far as in um, Taste you have a lot of people that the taste of something can alter their mood as well. Um, I had a client that to get him to take his medication, I would have to give him ice cream. And for me to give him ice cream, he would take his medication. However, if I do not have no ice cream, um, he was not taking his medication. <laughs> so you have to kind of incorporate different things and think of it as a, a baby. A baby, when they're a little baby, they don't know what taste, touch, smell, hearing is. They don't know that you ugly. They don't know that you loud. They cannot put it into perspective of what it is that's going on or what they're feeling or what they're tasting. It's no difference to the elders once they are, um, once they have Alzheimer's or dementia. They don't know what it is that they they can't convey because I don't know if they do know or if they don't know. I know that they at certain points of the illness they get to where they cannot convey to you what it is that they're trying to tell you where they can't convey their thoughts their memories they their conversation so what you do is basically you have to be the peace and the peace comes with using different skills to bring down agitation um, in order to have a good day because that's our main focus is for them to be as less agitated as possible and a way about doing that for example if you're trying to give them a bath and you turn on some music and they're like oh yeah I remember this music um, this was um, my wedding and blah 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 then what you do is you just start like kindly you know walking them to the bathroom and talking to them like yeah I know like wow well, well you know what happened that day maybe you want to ask a question during that time when they're already in full talk mode and at that point you just start you know undressing them running the water and you just make it as in you guys are going and going and going but what you don't do is abruptly start just asking too many questions <laughs> like my biggest pet peeve with that is asking too many questions so once you see that the agitation is subsided then you carry on with whatever task it is that you're trying to you know uh, do with them 